Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we're making this absolutely wonderful spiral infinity wrap, which is perfect for beginners. It's an absolute best first project. All you're using is double crochet and working around and around. So you get really good at your stitches and you don't have to think about anything else. It's so easy and so fun and quick to make. So let's get started. To make your super easy infinity scarf for beginners, for absolute beginners, you need three balls of yarn. These are 100 grams each, so 300 grams of yarn. I just picked three different colors that kind of inspire me for fall, but with a bit of winter fun. You're also going to need two different crochet hooks. I'm going to be making my scarf out of a six, with a six millimeter hook. So for my starter chain, I'm going to use a seven millimeter hook. This is going to help your chain not be too tight and your scarf look and fit properly afterwards. So whatever size of hook you're using for your scarf, just grab one size bigger if you have it for your starting chain. You'll also need a pair of scissors. I love these ones. They're cheap, but wow, do they cut nice. They're my new fave. I will put a link in the description box below. Uh, darting needle for later. You don't worry, we don't have to use it very much. And a stitch marker in case you want to take a break from making your scarf. So pick whichever color you're going to start with. I'm going to start with this. What color should I start with? Let me start with this green. I'm going to start with my least favorite. And I start from the center of my balls of yarn, just because when you're pulling it, if you start from the outside, your ball of yarn rolls around, even if you have a yarn bowl. Look at that nice big chunk of mess I got. So I just start from the center and then, oh, but I found my end. That's lucky. So put your tail over your non-dominant hand, hold it down on your ring finger with your thumb, wrap it around a few of your fingers to make a bit of an X, and just flip your hand over a tiny bit and poke that working yarn underneath the loop on your hand and pull it all off. You kind of want to leave, uh, you need to leave a long enough tail to sew in. So say four or five inches. Shrink the loop down and put it on your big hook. This is when you want to use your big hook. I'm using a seven millimeter. So put that right onto your hook shrink it down so it fits and you want to be working on this fat part of your hook don't don't work up where it's skinny that will mess you up in later like in later life so always be remembering to push your hook push your yarn up on the shaft of your hook this is the size that we want so now holding your yarn and holding your work and holding your yarn with your non-dominant hand you're going to push your hook onto your yarn tip it up turn it so this hook part is facing down and slide it through the loop on your hook. Now push it back up because you want to make every loop the same size as your crochet hook and do the same thing. So push your hook onto your yarn, turn it so it's facing up, turn your hook so it's facing down and slide your hook through that loop that was on your hook. Slide it up and repeat. We want to do this five times how you count your stitches, you don't count the knot and you don't count what is on your hook. You count these nice little V shapes. So there's one, two, three, and four. So we need to do one more. So that is five. We're going to just make this loop a little bigger. Hold it like that. Put your hook into this first V down there like that. Slide it down onto your hook put this loop back onto your hook, shrink it down, and now we're going to keep going. It feels a bit awkward, like this might be in the way, but don't worry about it. This just makes sure that our chain doesn't twist later, so don't even worry about it. Now we're going to chain, we just did five, so we have to do 165 more. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we did 5 and I did 15, so that is 20. So onto this stitch that I just did, so not on my hook but the one underneath, I'm going to put a stitch marker. So that is for 20 and I'm just going to keep chaining 20 and every 20 I'll put another stitch marker. 
If you'd like to practice more on your stitches, I will put a link in the description box below or put a card up above of where you can practice making your chain. But don't really worry about it. All you want to do is a nice, loose, relaxed chain. And remember to be pushing it up. Oops, I'm spinning everything around. Remember to be pushing it up. Push the stitches up onto the shaft of your hook every time. And if it gets a little bigger, you don't have to pull it to make it tight every time. You don't want to be doing that. You just want to be relaxed and let the yarn be the yarn. A tight chain will always cause us problems. So now keep going until you have 170 stitches. So pause the video, keep going, and I'll meet you when you have 170. I have finished my chain, 170 chains. So now to turn this into a ring and to start our infinity scarf, we're just going to bring this, the last stitch we made through the stitch that's been waiting on our hook. So now that is together and get your work laid out. We're going to be working around the part where we just started, not where we ended, but where we started. I hope that makes sense. And now make a bit of a bigger loop and take that hook out and put it far away from yourself. You're not using it anymore. Now you're going to be using your smaller hook. I'm using a six millimeter. So shrink that loop down. Don't worry about your tail. We are going to stitch that in later. So we did a slip stitch and into the next stitch. So how you're going to count your stitches are these V's. So there's two sides of your chain. This side with these big kind of V's. I guess they look more like V's going that way. And if you flip it over, there's these weird bumps. Don't worry about the bumps. Easiest way to do it, you just go straight into these V's. So don't worry where we slip stitched. Into the next stitch we are going to do one single crochet. So just put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. So that is your first single crochet. Yes. So you're going to do that one into each of these V's. So I'm going to go two loops on my hook. So I'm going to put it into the bottom of the V, grab my yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. Into the next V, Put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. Now into the next one, the other way you can look at it is just these little moons at the bottom. Each one of these moons is a stitch and each one of those stitches needs, we're going to work into it. So for the next stitch, now we're going to do two half double crochets. So wrap your yarn and go into the bottom where that, that little crescent is, the bottom of the V-stitch. Go in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. So that's a half double crochet. Wrap your yarn and we're going to go into the next bottom of the stitch, the next little semicircle waiting for you there. Push your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. So that's two half double crochets. And now we're going to move straight into doubles, which is what we're going to be doing for the rest of the, of the scarf. So wrap your yarn again into the next bottom little semicircle waiting for you. Push your hook in. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Remember to slide all your stitches up onto your, the shaft of your hook. Grab your yarn and take off two. Grab your yarn and take off two. And we're going to do that all the way along now into the bottom of this V. Can you see that each one? So here's a stitch, there's a stitch, here's 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 a stitch, all the way along. So this is the next one. Go in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Gee, it's sunny, isn't it? Hold on better? I think so. So wrap your yarn into the next bottom. Grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. And each of these 
we're going to do one double crochet into each of these chains going along. Now this part it takes the longest, it's the most tedious, it's the most boring, but we will persevere. After this it goes much quicker. So into every single one of those little loops at the bottom and try to just keep your chain straight. If it starts twisting, it starts looking weird. So just make sure that you have your V's facing up. Wrap your yarn and go into the next little loop down there. Double crochet. So one double crochet into each of these chain stitches working all the way around until we get back to where we started. So pause the video, keep going making one double crochet into each of these stitches. It's quite fiddly, it's a bit dull, but you're going to go into each one, one, two, three, four, five, all the way around and I'll meet you when you get back to this area. Now sometimes you might be working along and then what is that? That is a twist in my chain. So don't worry about it, it's just a chain, no one's going to see it other than me <laughs> and you, but you won't even notice it. So just see how my chains flip to being my V's are now upside down. So get your chain back the way it should be. You can decide if you want to make a stitch right into that lump or you want to skip it and go into the next, the next downward uh, moon or the little V, or the bottom of the V or that little moon down there. I'm going to just skip it and go into that moon and how I'm deciding if I'm going to do that is I take the whole piece and I stretch it, just pull it. And if it's tight on the chain side, or because I can stretch more on the side that we just stitched than I can on my chain. My chain is still a bit tight, meaning I can skip a stitch. It won't hurt because my chain is still tighter than my stitches by a smudge. So I'm going to skip that and I'm just going to work straight into the next stitch doing what I do with my chain facing the right direction and the next one and I'll just work a little bit and I'll show you how it looks so it looks like that I mean technically I guess you could see maybe I made a mistake in there but no one's going to notice and it's going to wrap around your neck twice so that's how I decide. Usually it's better to skip than add an extra stitch because our, my chain at least and lots of my uh, fellow crocheters chains are tighter than their stitches even if they use a bigger hook. So don't worry about it but that's how you would handle uh, a twist in your chain. Keep going, I'll meet you when you get to the end. Now I'm getting back to my join. I have one more loop that I know is a stitch so I'm going to go into that last one that I can see make my double crochet. Now I'm going to lay it out. So the one I've just been working on, I know that's the top. So I'm going to lay it out flat. So this one here I'm going to make flat. It's big so you can do it a lot easier than me because I don't want to do it all off camera. But what you're going to do is make sure that they are not, you don't want any twists. So that's the one side. It goes all the way nicely to the other side. I don't need those stitch markers. So now it's not twisted. So when your tail's behind, wrap your yarn, go into that loop that made your the tail. We're going to go into this guy there just to secure it down. So go into there and just make a double crochet. It's kind of like we skip down a row but just kind of like that. Now wrap your yarn into this very next stitch and here's our stitches. There's one stitch, there's the second stitch, the third stitch, the fourth stitch, all of these V's and we want to go straight into the V's. So wrap your yarn, go into that V. You kind of have to turn your work and kind of like poke at it because it's on an angle. But get both of those loops of the V on your hook. 
grab your yarn and bring it back and do a half double. So wrap your yarn and take off all three loops. So that is our join. And now we're just going to be working in a spiral, so no more joining, no more worrying about anything. Go straight back into the next stitch, two loops of that V on your hook. Grab your yarn and bring it back and do your double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. And you're going to make one of these into each stitch, going all the way around until you run out of yarn. So there's no more thinking, there's no more worrying, there's no more wondering if you're doing it right. Each single one of these stitches needs a double crochet. And your stitches, if you, if you pinch your work and tip it up, you'll see these V's. I hope you can see those V's, I think you can. So each one of those V's is a stitch. So just remember to pinch it and turn it up to you. And then go in two loops of the V on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back, and make a double crochet. If you're not sure if you've got into the stitch, just kind of take a break, pull that last stitch you made, and you'll see which loop it's yanking up. So this last stitch, you can see it's gone into that hole in there, so the next one would be over there. Just make sure you get your hook out of the way, pull it to the side, and you can kind of get your bearings and see where you need to go. So one double crochet into each stitch all the way around until you run out of yarn. And I'll meet you back. So I was crocheting along. I'm like, let me stop and show you what happens when we get back to where we joined. Look, nothing happens. You still keep going one into every stitch and we start spiraling up. So you're literally doing nothing until you run out of yarn. How great is that? So keep going and I'll meet you when you do run out of yarn. So I've gotten to the end of my first ball of yarn and this is how we're going to join our second ball of yarn. So now we're going to join our yarn with a magic knot. So lay your yarns out where you can keep an eye on them. You know which ones they are and what they're doing. It helps with different colors but this is the general gist of how I started to learn my magic knot. Now I can do it any which way but for now take your new yarn and you're going to wrap it kind of around your old yarn and make a knot, just a regular one, like a school knot, regular knot like that and pull it down. Really tight. You don't want to break your yarn but you want to get close to breaking your yarn. Then your old yarn you put over your new yarn, poke it under and you want to turn that into a knot as well. Quiet, honey, okay? So pull it down really tight. So now you have two knots, two tails, and you pull both yarns and they slide together. Make sure these tails don't get stuck in the middle. Sometimes they get stuck in there. Give it a big pull. Eee! You don't want to break your yarn, but close. You want to give it a good try. If you're making it with silk or something like that, a more delicate fiber, you can't actually pull that much. Now get your good, good scissors. Grab one of the yarns, and I'm pulling with my finger so that's really tight in there. And slide your scissors down onto that knot. You want to actually cut at like zero, ground zero. Cut it off. And there is your, your waist. And do the same with the second tail. Pull it tight slide your scissors down onto that knot and give it a cut. Throw that one away also or give it to the birds outside. Little bird nest fixings and now pull it again. You want to make sure that it's tight. Pull now again to make sure it's tight. Super tight and that is a magic knot. You just nailed it. So now keep going making one double crochet into each stitch until you get to that knot. And what you want is that knot to get sucked up into that stitch. So maybe you can wiggle it so it gets sucked in. That's actually pretty good. But the other thing you can do, actually I'm quite happy with that, but on the one side we can still see it. Not that I care. I mean it's still going to be great. But if we were crocheting, we could just try that stitch again. I would want to have a little tiny bit less yarn so that knot was on my hook 
and I could just pull it up and hide it under those two loops. So what I'm going to do is go back three stitches, one, two, three, and I'm going to make these stitches l much more loose. So I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm just going to relax. I'm not going to pull on it. So my tension is going to be like close to zero for three stitches. So one, no tension, super slack. Two, no tension, super slack. Three, no tension, super slack. Now I'm going to try that stitch again. I'm still not using tension. Oh, but now see it's going to slide under and be there. And we don't want it there. So now I'm going to make tension. I'm going to pull on my yarn. My yarn's tight now. I'm going to go in. Oh gosh, it's so sunny now. What happened? Bring my yarn back. Now I can wrap the, my yarn with that knot right where I wanted it to be. Drag it through. Just make it get there. And finish my double crochet. Now that knot is hiding right where I want it to be. And I'm just going to keep going before I inspect it because I'm pretty sure that's going to be slamming. Keep going. Do, do, do. Do a couple stitches with your new yarn. And isn't it fun to change color? And now if you pinch that stitch, I can't see the knot on this side. And I can't see the knot on that side. That might be a bit of the knot down in there. I'm cool with it. That doesn't bother me. So now keep going until you run out of this yarn. Rinse and repeat. But just for fun, I'll meet you when you run out of this ball of yarn, because it's so fun. Pause the video and see you soon. So I'm ready for my third color. I started, how I planned it for me is I did the colors, anyway, I wanted to end with the color I like the most. So that is going to help you be motivated. So finish with your favorite color. That's what I did. And I'm super excited about it now. So get your ball of yarn ready. And we're going to do a magic knot the same as we did the last time. So your new color, wrap it around your old color. And make just a very simple knot, like tying your shoes. And pull it down tight. Eee! And now do the same with your old yarn around your new yarn. Make a knot like that and pull it down. Nice and tight. Now grab both of your working yarns and slide those two knots together. Give it a big pull and now we can cut off those tails. Isn't this a great way of joining yarn? It's so, it's like life changing. So slide your scissors right onto that knot and give it a cut. Pull your yarn again, make sure that it's really tight. Ugh. So we're going to keep going. I switched to my tulip hook just because my two six millimeter clovers are both upstairs beside my bed. Of course they are. So one double crochet into each stitch and let's just see how this knot works for us. So it's right on the side. Oh, that's not good, is it? So I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to make four stitches tighter. So you can make them looser or more loose or you can make them tighter. And that'll change the length of yarn that you are working with when you get to your knot. I don't know if I did that enough or not. Almost. So I went three stitches. I'm going to go four stitches. One, two, three. Let me do five. This is also how you adjust for color pooling. So it's good practice. Just decide if you need more yarn or less yarn. If you need more yarn, you make your stitches tighter. If you need less yarn, then you make your stitches looser. So I'm making these quite tight. Aha, there we go, look at this. So you want your knot just up on your hook and we will slide it underneath those first two. Perfect. So now it's going to be stuck inside there. Let's keep going. I don't want to poke at it. See? It's just tucked. Is it tucked? Let's go. Inside that stitch. Yeah. That 
looks pretty good. It's not on the outside. It is in the middle and you can kind of still wiggle it in there if you'd like. But that is your magic knot join. No ends to sew in. I'm cool with that. So now keep going with your last color until this one is almost finished. You still want to have about two feet of yarn left. So keep going until you have just a little bit of yarn left and I'll meet you back. So I've gotten to the end of my third ball of yarn. I have like that much yarn left. I'm just guessing that's enough pretty much. So half double, wrap your yarn and go into the stitch like you have been. Wrap your yarn and take off all three. And we're going to do that three times. So this is our second one, half double crochet. And our third one. So wrap your yarn, go in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off all three. That just gets our height down a little bit. It starts shrinking it. Next we're going to do three single crochets and to do a single crochet you just go into the stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. We're going to do that three times. Three single crochets, one into each stitch. Go in, grab the yarn and bring it back, wrap your yarn and take off two. And now if you look at your height, you can see your height shrinking down. So we're not, we're not like stopping with a big staircase, we're just kind of tapering it down to nothing. And now into the next two stitches, we are going to slip stitch. So that you just go into the stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook and bring it through that loop. So that is a slip stitch, we're gonna do that again. Into the stitch, grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook, and bring it through. And now we are pretty much, we've gone pretty flat. It's tapered down. We're okay with that. It's all going to be around your neck, all kind of bunched up. So you can just chain one, pull your hook up and your yarn through, and snug that down. So that finished off our scarf. So thread your needle and go down into this next stitch. Let's poke it down. You want to get that chain one, you want to get that flat. You don't want that one sticking up like a knobbly. And then just kind of follow these yarns down onto this next row. And then maybe back up a little bit through that one loop. You can do it any which way, but the idea is you go three different directions. So we've come down, now we're going to go over I'm going to pick up this, go through, well, not pick up, I'm going to go through that little stitch there to hold my yarn. I'll go back through this stitch. So it's gone back in the opposite direction, so that helps it not stretch and wiggle out later. And I'll go down through this guy. We don't want the tail to be near the very edge because that'll get a lot of wear and tear and it can kind of puff up like a little straggly one thing later. And we don't want that. We want our tail to just disappear, never to be seen again. So keep going down a couple rows, working your way through these stitches. Yep, they're home. And then back up. Now wiggle up straight through this stitch. So it's gone back along itself. And I'll go through this stitch. Like that. Maybe I'll go back down. So this is the third time in the same area, so for sure I'm not going to see this tail again. Just do the fat part. So I hold my finger under. I don't want to feel my needle. That's how I know I'm hiding it. And you don't want to pull too much, you just want to have like a relaxed tension so everything is still pretty relaxed, nothing's too tight. Then I pull my yarn a little bit and cut it off. Make sure you don't cut your stitch, use some nice scissors. These ones are really great because they're bent like that, they're really handy. 
So now that tail is finished. We'll just flip it and find the other green tail or where we started, whatever color you started with. Mine is this olive green, so we'll do the same thing. Off. And you're finished. <laughs>